What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Typically on this channel, 99% of the time, we do Dynasty trade reviews. We are reviewing your trades that you guys are submitting into our Discord. But today, we are going to venture into that 1%. I thought it would be fun. I thought it would be interesting to show you guys seven Dynasty Fantasy Football trades that I have made on real teams, $100 buy-in leagues here this offseason. So with that being said, I'm going to show off some trades for you guys today. And all of these leagues have very, very similar settings, almost identical settings. So we can talk about them all from one lens, one perspective. But without wasting any more time, why don't we hop in? into today's video and why don't we start talking about these trades. Now, as I mentioned, all of these trades can be talked about from a similar lens because all of these leagues are going to be super flex leagues. They are full point PPR leagues with a half point tight end premium. So that is 1.5 per reception for the tight ends. They are all start 10 and they have very deep benches. So that is kind of the lens that we are talking about. Also, all of these leagues are one quarterback, two running back, three wide receivers, a tight end, two flex and a super flex. So that is the lens we are talking about. But the first trade that I want to talk about is going to be coming from a league called the Dynasty Tea Party. And we named this league the Dynasty Tea Party because all of the managers in here are from the UK or the United States. So you guys get it. The Boston Tea Party, the Dynasty Tea Party. It is what it is. But this is a trade that I made here in April. It is going to be Jake Ferguson for Cole Komet in a 2025 third. Now this trade isn't a super exciting trade, but this is a deal where I wanted to get out of a guy like Cole Komet because I felt like with the rumors at the time of them possibly getting a Romo Dunze or maybe even being in for another wide receiver. We also know that they traded for Keenan Allen and DJ Moore is there. It felt like to me that it was going to be too crowded for Cole Komet to be a reliable tight end piece in a format like this. As much as I like Cole Komet, I was overexposed to Cole Komet, so I sold off a share or two, and I went and got Jake Ferguson because I feel like Jake Ferguson had a very underrated year in 2023. A lot of people don't talk about the year that he had. He was a real contributor for the Dallas Cowboys. And we know this year they haven't went out. They haven't got a lot of guys in free agency. They haven't got a lot of guys in the draft. In fact, they really haven't got anybody. So it should be more of the same for Jake Ferguson here in 2024. And I think he is going to be a similar tier, maybe even a tier up from what Cole Komet will give me production wise this year, probably very similar value wise. And I think he is going to be a safer, more reliable option. Fergie, he will be my number two tight end on this roster and on a team that does have Dalton Kincaid, but behind Dalton Kincaid, there was nobody of value at the tight end position. So I feel a lot better about this. That 2025 third was just the fluff that needed to get in to get this deal completed. And I'm okay doing that every time. Now, moving on to our next trade here, we are going to a different league. This league is going to be called the Gambler's Garage. And the next four trades we talk about will be this league and this team specifically. Now, this team here is loaded, ready to go. I should be the clear top contender. I am the clear top contender. And this team kind of did a productive struggle for two years. And like I said, loaded, loaded roster. Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, Mark Andrews, Trey McBride, tons of assets. So I can take a little bit of risk here. In this deal, I traded low for Rashi Rice. Now I'm getting Rashi Rice. I give up Evan Engram and a third. Now keep in mind, this is still that tight end premium type of league. And Evan Engram, he had a good year last year. Kind of sold on that hype. The team that is receiving Evan Engram at the time felt like he needed a backup tight end. He has Travis Kelsey. I think he has a couple other guys, but he felt like he needed the tight end. He thought that Engram's year in 2023 was underrated as well. And for whatever reason, as a guy who is a Chiefs fan, he was panicking on Rashi Rice. He also drafted Xavier Worthy in the rookie draft. So I felt like maybe he wanted to get out of Rashi. Send the offer. The offer happened. This is what buying low looks like. And I get Rashi Rice now. He's going to go on to the back end of this roster. Like I said, a loaded roster. And I'm okay if Rashi Rice doesn't pan out. I don't think that's going to happen. Obviously, I'm not buying him if I don't think it's panning out, but I got him pretty cheap. And the upside for a deal like this is going to be massive, especially on a roster like that where I don't need Rushy Rice to even play this year. So uh, that is the deal that I made here. And like I said, a loaded roster also buying low on Rashi Rice. Now in the same league, I also traded away a 2025 first and I received Bryce Young. Now at the time, this was before our 2024 rookie draft where in the rookie draft, I was able to add a couple quarterbacks on the cheap because people were fading them into the second round, late into the first round. And at the time I needed Bryce Young. I needed another quarterback on this roster because the only quarterbacks that I had were Trevor Lawrence, Dak Press, 
Prescott, and uh, I think it was Kirk Cousins too. So those were the quarterbacks that I had. I wanted to get another one. I'd been talking about all offseason how I felt like Bryce Young was a buy at his price and that I was always going to be willing to give a 2025 first, especially this one where Rookie and the Vet, his team is considered a contender. He is probably going to be a late pick, assuming nothing crazy happens as far as like most of his starting lineup getting injured, but he should be a late first round pick. And like I said, practicing what I'm preaching here because Bryce Young at this cost, I will always buy Bryce Young at this cost, especially in a league like this where it is a six point passing touchdown. And I think I forgot to mention that at the top of the video, all of these leagues are six point passing touchdown. So give me Bryce Young. Like I said, I'm a little bit overweight at the quarterback position now because I did get Bo Nix. I did get JJ McCarthy in the rookie draft. So I have quite a bit of quarterback talent, but that is not a bad thing to have in a super flex league. So I made this deal here with Vegas Sinatra and I would make this a hundred times over again because I think Bryce Young under Dave Canales with Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett, Adam Thielen, Jonathan Brooks, all of those things changing in 2024. It does feel like he should take a step forward and break out in 2024. So I am willing to buy him at that price. And if you lose this price, a 2025 late first round pick, you probably want it back if Bryce Young totally busted this, but it's not something that you can't get back later down the line. So definitely worth giving this on a contending roster in a league like this. So that is trade number three. Let's move on to trade number four. Same team here. Now, another roster move that I did where I was kind of moving laterally, maybe even an upgrade, I think, for Jalen Waddle. I give up Jackson Smith and Jigba and Jackson Smith and Jigba was a player that I drafted everywhere in 2023. So I was overexposed to Njigba and I felt like I needed to kind of get a share or two sold off this offseason because even though I still believe in JSN, I'm not 100% confident anymore that he will live up to the player that I thought he was going to be. So this was an opportunity where Killa B and I, we were able to work out a deal where I get Jalen Waddle, a player who I think is probably a tier above JSN at this point, And I am willing to just take this and run away in a type of format like this where like I said this roster is contending it is a dominant roster and I don't need to wait on JSN I'm ready to go right now so if he wants to wait on JSN he believes in JSN still and he was willing to give me a guy like Jalen Waddle I'm taking it every time give me Jalen Waddle here I am going to be very happy with a deal like this and and this is something that I made a little bit earlier on in the offseason you see it was done in March so so yeah there was a little bit less negativity about JSN I think maybe at this time, I can't remember completely, but uh, Tyler Lockett may have not signed the extension. I don't really know how much that played a role into this type of deal. But like I said, I was overexposed at JSN. I wanted to sell off a couple of these shares and this was the best offer that I got in any of my leagues for JSN. So this was a no brainer for me. Now, moving on to trade number five here, this is going to be the last trade in that league where I told you I had a dominant roster. I was able to sell off early in the offseason, January. It was like right after the NFL season finished. I sold Zach Charbonnet to Sugar. He is a Seattle Seahawks fan, so it helps to know your league mates. But I sold Zach Charbonnet. I got a 2024 second round pick and a 2024 third round pick. Now, I ended up keeping those picks throughout the offseason, and I actually ended up using them in our rookie draft. The 2024 second rounder, it turned into Bo Nix. And then the 2024 third rounder turned into Marshawn Lloyd of the Green Bay Packers. So what it turned into was Zach Charbonnet for Bo Nix and Marshawn Lloyd. This felt like a smash. I mean, obviously at the time it was like, eh, you get a second and a third, probably lean that side if you're trying to get liquid. But now looking back at it, you get a starting quarterback with top 12 draft capital in a super flex league. And you get a guy like Marshawn Lloyd who probably could end up being like a similar asset to a Zach Charbonnet. I think this is a smash 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 except on my side and aged like fine wine so very happy about this deal and like i said bo nix fell to me at a value and this was just a draft the best player available draft the most valuable player on the board. So even though I didn't need him at the time, now I have Bo Nix and I can use him in deals to maybe potentially move somewhere else later. Maybe a guy has a quarterback that goes down in the middle of the season. You can get a 2025 first round pick for Bo Nix. And then you're looking at like a 25 first and a 2024 third, AKA Marshawn Lloyd for Zach Charbonnet. Just always keeping it moving, keeping those trade talks open. It does always help you kind of find some more loopholes, I guess, where you can find value, find some valleys where you can buy some players and also sell some players high, especially if you know your league mates like uh, Ragnar, who is a Chiefs fan 
and you know that Sugar is a Seahawks fan. So those are the kind of trades that I like to make. And those are all of the trades that I made in the Gambler's Garage so far. So let's move on to the third league. Again, same thing. Super flex, PPR, tight end, premium, six point passing touchdown. And this is called the Gridiron Gurus. So the first trade here is going to be made during our rookie draft. I received a 2025 first round pick and I am going to project this pick to be middle of the pack because this team feels like he might be close to like four to six range like I, I feel like that's probably where he's going to finish now I traded away the 206 and a 2025 third on the board of the 206 was Michael Penix but my quarterbacks in this league are pretty damn good I have Jalen Hurts I have Kyler Murray and I have Baker Mayfield so I felt like I was pretty solid at the quarterback and like I said all of these teams are contending but this is probably the one that I feel the least confident in I think I'm a playoff team for sure but we'll see what happens once you get into the playoffs but I am consciously retooling and getting a little bit younger and kind of looking for the future as well so guys like Jalen Hurts Kyler Murray who are young but elite quarterbacks and I have guys like Jordan Addison, Kenneth Walker, uh, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman Jr., a couple younger assets, maybe Pittman not so much, but looking towards the future a little bit while still contending. That 2025 first, it gets me liquid. It gives me some flexibility long term. I can move that for a player, or if he does finish in that six kind of territory, then you have a solid player on the board here in 2025 that you can select. But like I said, the liquidity is what I liked. Didn't necessarily want to go against my draft board and pick somebody that wasn't a quarterback in Michael Penix, or maybe just get a fourth quarterback there that I didn't really need and I wanted to sit on the bench because I think the hope for a guy like Michael Penix is you get him, you sit him for a year or two, and then you get a starting quarterback, or maybe you just wait until he's a starter and then you can flip him for a first plus I'd rather just get the first right now so Ants was willing to offer it I went and got the 2025 first and now I'm liquid here in this league and then the final trade here this is from March same league gridiron gurus I did sell Justin Fields as soon as he was traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers this was like the day of I sold him for a 2024 first which was a late first round pick I think it was the 109 and then a 2025 third and with that 109 I drafted Xavier Worthy so I flipped Justin Fields for Xavier Worthy like I said Said, I was I was a little bit deep at the quarterback position hurts Kyler and Baker Mayfield and I was done with the Justin Fields train man I had dealt with that drama and that up and down all offseason long and I was sick of it so maybe I sold a little bit short on this type of deal I think if you asked most people right now they probably still prefer Justin but I still don't think it's that off I'll take worthy maybe he ends up becoming the number one wide receiver long term for Patrick Mahomes and that's the kind of deal that I went I probably could have moved that first later down the road as well but I needed to get another young Young wide receiver on this roster and this was a great class to add that so worthy for Justin Fields just was sick of the up and down with Justin Fields all offseason so this is a move that I made so there you have it those were seven dynasty fantasy football trades that I made in my leagues this offseason let me know what you guys think about the trades down below let me know some of the trades that you guys have made in your leagues this offseason as well if you enjoyed the content you kind of liked a different approach to this maybe we can do this every once in a while I'll share some trades that I'm actually making in my league so you guys can see I practice what I preach here on this channel and if you like the content hit the like button down below also make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell as well that way you guys always get notified when new videos come out because we'd love to make you a part of this community here at the league ffb and speaking of being a part of this community make sure you guys go down into the description there is a link to a discord it is free to join i am in there helping you with your dynasty teams redraft teams best ball teams waivers trades all of that stuff and if you want your trades reviewed on a future trade show we are doing one this weekend on sunday so go submit your trades in that discord right now like i said free to join so no risk in doing that with all that out of the way i will see you guys on our next video until then Peace out.